What if the writer is attempting to create a story where nothing much happens, where people don't change, they struggle and are frustrated and nothing is resolved? More reflection of the real world. First of all, you write a screenplay without conflict or crisis, you'll bore your audience to tears. Nothing happens in the world? Are you out of your mind? People are murdered every day. day. Somewhere in the world, somebody sacrifices his life to save somebody else. Every day, someone somewhere takes a conscious decision to destroy someone else. For Christ's sake, a child watches a mother beaten to death on the steps of a church. Someone goes hungry. Somebody else betrays his best friend for a woman. If you can't find that stuff in life, then you, my friend, don't know crap about life. It's an everyday thing, it's an everyday thing, it's an everyday thing when you let your nest hang. What to do, everyday people, man? It's your boy PJ. Today we back with another lit video back in the confessional. Yeah, we staying lit, big dog. Hey, man, shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day, man. And shout out to the homie Lucky Wheels of Deals, man. You know he keeping it lit. And shout out to the whole Nike PRP squad, 32 gang, the So Wolf Pack of Cool Kids, So Cool fam, and everybody that be rocking with me. Shout out to the Anti Hyena squad and review that with Des Cousins, man. All the people, you know what I'm saying? We going lit, we getting lit, staying up. And shout out to uh, Bill Cabins, man. He jumped on the live and we was live, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go subscribe to all those YouTubers. Subscribe to the homie Lucky Wheels and Deals, man. Y'all know we would represent the Lucky Nation and we keeping that lit, okay? Now, <laughs> y'all see the title. We named, we got the uh, whole um, seminar I'm about to break down for y'all. And it, the reason why I give a seminar is because I actually have knowledge and something that pertains to something that all you can start and anybody can have a dream have a goal and accomplish that you know what i'm saying as you can see i'm sitting standing in front of my turkey leg cabana and i've done some or done i've done a lot of work to it y'all don't know like i got metal done on the floor i got the window put back in because the window was out and uh i'm out here in the country my trailer backed up I got the door handle fixed. I got some locks on it and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just I, I redid the floors um, because the floor was a mess and I had to do it on my own. But let me tell you what, one, a lot of stuff that you, when you start a business, you're gonna realize you're gonna have to do a lot of stuff on your own. You, ain't, you can't really cut corners, but you can save some dollars by uh, going to YouTube University, um, Googling. Find out a way to do something. Like I had to do my floors. Hopefully I can show y'all. I'm, I'm gonna just walk around here and show y'all a little bit. But I got my lights working. I had to do that myself, you know what I mean? But as y'all can see, you know, we got nice floors that I can mop on and stuff like that. I did that myself. But before I get started, I want to show y'all where I started from. Started from the bottom, and uh, so yeah, I'm gonna let y'all got let you guys know that um, you know when you want to start a business or a hobby or something, you sometimes have to start with whatever you can get your hands on and try to figure it out from there. You know, um, just have a well planned out, thought out plan, and go for it. Sometimes your plan, you can you can do all the planning you want to. But that don't that ain't gonna make it succeed. So you gotta actually get out there and actually do some stuff. So I'm gonna show y'all my first trailer. This is my first trailer that I got. Uh, you see it's still hanging on strong. And I still use it, but I'm I don't really use it much. I'm finna use it a lot next weekend because I'm gonna be cooking for myself, the turkey leg cabana. Oh, it's still old stuff in there. But um, so I bought this. Um, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. There's a firebox. Found it on Facebook Marketplace. This is what this is what happened. So through the pandemic, uh, I tried many things and I failed at several different things. Uh, one of the things was wholesaling homes. I tried to wholesale homes, and I lost a lot of money uh, learning and you know just just trying to figure things out. I did network a lot though. I networked a lot. I joined some groups. I went to meetings with people who are also wholesalers and, you know, made some good connections. 
Um, but unfortunately, it didn't work. I wasted a lot of money. So before I could uh, go broke, I said, man, I got to find something else out. So, you know, I was just watching stuff, watching stuff on TV, YouTube, and I got an idea from somebody. And I said, man, let me see how much it costs to make a trailer. Let me find out how much it costs to cook some turkey legs. Let me find out what it is. So what I did was I went and got me some cheap turkey legs from the store and I smoked them, see how to learn to smoke like turkey legs, see how it turned out. It turned out pretty good. So I was like, all right, I'm finna go find a trailer. I looked on Facebook Marketplace. I saw this on Facebook Marketplace for $2,000. And then uh, I was like, dang. So I kept, you know, looking around and then what do you know? They changed the price down to 1500. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool right there. So instead of, I didn't even have 1500. Um, well, actually I did have 1500. I just wasn't gonna pay 1500. So I talked them down to 1100. I got it for $1,100. So then, oh, if y'all don't know, it had, let's go back to it. It had these rims on there. So it had these wire spoke rims on there. Well, driving it back and forth from home to from the country back to my house so I could do the trailer lights, um, one of the tires blew out. Hadn't even had it a week. So then I had to change that tire. I got that one tire changed and I went and had to get some trailer tires, you know. Um, then I went out the next week. I felt my trailer wobbling. And what do you know? The other tire was about to fall off, but it had stripped the, uh, it stripped the bolts. And I, I documented a lot of this on YouTube last year. So if you can go back to my turkey leg videos, you'll see that. And I went out. I went out. I, I found a good price on turkey legs. I actually went from one spot to another uh, buying turkey legs. And then I got out there and uh, started selling them. I wasn't selling out from the first few weeks. I wasn't selling out. And so what I would do is I'll just go to the gas stations, go around trying to get people. I'm like, man, donate me $7. Here. Cause if basically if I get $7, I'll at least break even on the turkey leg. So I get my $7, they'll try it. They'll be like, that's bomb. They want to know where I'm setting up at. And then, so I started going out on Fridays and Saturdays, man, it was booming. You know what I mean? Um, I still wasn't selling out, but towards the end of the summer, I was selling out like two two hours, two, three hours. Everybody was coming. So I saved up a little money, saved up a little money. I was like, okay, it's getting cold. I can't do the same thing. I can't do uh, sell no turkey legs through the winter time because I only got a trailer. So I was like, man, I got to upgrade. So I saved up some money. This is right before tax time. Uh, right before tax time, I bought this trailer, right? So 4,500, the guy wanted 5,500 for it. And I talked him down to 4,500, paid him cash. First, I was gonna pay him 3,700. See, I, I negotiated, I said, man, let me pay you like 3,700 and then I'll pay you out. And he was like, all right, he'll take that deal as another black man. He was like, man, I'll I, I do business, I'll do good business with you, right? So I was like, cool, we did the business. And then, uh, so, but I came with the whole 4,500 the next uh, next couple of days and uh picked it up had to get a new tire on it uh all this was wood under here or whatever and uh i mean the window was out if you gonna look for my some of my videos even on my instagram the window was out so it's like man but it was a start man i was happy y'all don't understand how happy i was to give me a barbecue concession you know this is just what i needed and, uh, but uh, I'm just, I'm telling y'all my story because I want y'all to understand that, that we're gonna get to the business part in just a second. But I'm telling y'all this story because I didn't give up and now I got all my stuff ready. And next week I'm going back out. I didn't go out this weekend because I still had some stuff to get handled. But I'm going back out next week and uh, 
yeah man selling turkey legs so reason re reason why i say i'm qualified to actually hold a business seminar is because one i've had several businesses that succeed and fail um most of my businesses that succeeded i had a hat business i was selling snapback hats this one snapback hats was very popular and you know one thing i learned about uh uh, selling sap, snapback hats is being able to get obtain your product when you need it. So I was buying these snapback hats from China. So I wouldn't get them immediately. Like it would take me some time to get my hats. So that right there in itself uh, was causing me issues when I needed to get new hats, right? So let's take a seat on the back of the truck. So I learned the supply chain issue. You know, I had a supply chain issue. So any anytime you want to go into business, you want to make sure that you don't have issues like that supply chain. Um, be having access to product. Now the product was cheap. Don't get me wrong, it was cheap, but it would take two weeks to get. So I had to make my money. And by the time I make my money, most of the good has to be sold. So then I'm going out with the same old hats um, for another two weeks, then I get more hats. And then, you know, sometimes they sell. But uh, then also, it's like placement. And also, I got another job. I started making decent money. And then my woman was like, well, you don't need the woman at the time. I was like, you don't need to sell this weekend. You don't need to sell this weekend. Stay home this weekend. And it went from one weekend to two weekends. And then I just quit altogether. So, just letting y'all know, don't let your spouse <laughs> get in the way of your business. Because they will. Your time and your efforts will take precedent to your relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, your re your relationship got to be on the back burner while you go out and make this money. Because if they don't understand what you're trying to do, and they want you to spend more time with them, y'all going to forever be broke. I'm mean, not saying that you have to be broke. But you won't, you won't have an abundant lifestyle. Your business won't continue to grow because your woman is worried about you laying up or your man is worried about you being around other people and these other men and the clients and stuff like that, you know? So, and, uh, so that's, that's another thing I want to tell y'all. Um, but also networking, you got to network. So here's the thing. Um, I, I network, I, I learn what I currently do, like for, for instance, with the wholesaling, I was going to wholesaling meetings. They was have, they was, they'll have like breakfast meetings with a, a bunch of different wholesalers and they'll teach you different stuff. People that been in the game for a while and you know, you learn different avenues. It was different ways of wholesaling. Like you can just middleman or you could actually go through the whole process. You have the people who have the money to buy the homes. It was, it was just a lot into it. So in order for that to succeed, I had to network. But I mean, it still didn't succeed, but <laughs> for purposes of this video, you just still got to network no matter if your business is growing or not. So if you got a hair and nail business, you better be uh, networking with all the local shops. You know what I mean? Or if you got a, a clothing boutique, you better learn, see what other clothing boutiques are doing and where are they uh, shortcomings or good times or what it may be you gotta you gotta expand your mind if you want to cut grass big dog i mean if you got lawn care service you i mean it's, it's so many ways to network with different people find people you know who's already done it who got skin in the game and just take some take some pointers man don't don't be afraid to ask somebody it's a lot of people that won't, don't want to give you information but it's a lot of people that are willing to be like man I, this man, he gonna he come he gonna come to me for information. I give him the knowledge. A lot of people will do that. But you just gotta be not not be afraid to ask that question. All right. Also, it's hot out here, and I've been sipping a little bit of Tanqueray. Look at that. But uh, another another thing is uh uh you know find find a cheap product that you can sell for more. Okay. So. 
and and not only that then compare your prices to other people's prices so you got to find a cheap product let's, let's say the, the hats i had to find hats that were um i had to get my hats for like five dollars because i was selling for 15 or 20 20 dollars pretty much you, you got to quadruple your price you can't really making double your price is not gonna make you enough money so you gotta quadruple it uh, you gotta quadruple your price you gotta make you gotta make some money you know because first of all first of all you gotta re-up on the product you gotta double the double the amount of the money you make for the product and you gotta be able to pay yourself and then you gotta be able to pay the company so that's why you need it's, it's best to find something where you can quadruple your uh profit if you can find that if you can quadruple your profit you have a great product okay that's 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 anywhere in business now people can say oh you only paid this much hey it's the service dog it's what i'm doing and some people just gotta understand that um go around checking prices so another thing i do um i hang tvs i don't do it for a living i, I do it's word of mouth you know, most most people that most people that I hang TVs for is referred to by another person that I've hung a TV for. And at some point, I first started out hanging up TVs for like twenty five dollars. I was like, man, it's twenty five dollars. I'll be over there thirty minutes, get it done, be out of there. But then I looked at Best Buy and how much they charge to hang up TVs. I was like, it's three hundred dollars. I'm like, man, I'm undercharging myself. You know, I, I'm I'm undercharging myself. I'm working harder, so I had to up the prices, and I had to have a pricing structure. So because there's different TV sizes, there are different uh, wall mounts and stuff like that. So you know, and there are different surfaces that you got to put the put on uh, put the TV on. So I say all that to say this is just like, man, there's many different facets to starting a business. And getting something going but you gotta you gotta start you gotta pick up pick up the, your uh, phone pick up your computer google learn uh, learn a lot you know learn what you can it's a lot of free information out there you know and then get you a name get you a name get you a llc uh it, llc may cost you a hundred dollars or something depending on what state you're in and what the price is some people get it through the Secretary of State, like here in Oklahoma. Some people get them through other uh, third-party agencies that do it for the state. And then, um, then you gotta get you a EIN number. EIN number is free. Don't pay nobody to get you a EIN number. Okay, EIN number is what you're gonna use to open up your bank account. So you have your LLC name and your uh, EIN number and your, get your bank account information. Go and get your bank account. Okay, you can start a business banking account. Uh, find a find a uh, a free business banking. They do, there's a lot of free business banking for small banks. If you're in Oklahoma, you can use Arvis. I used Arvis to start mine. If you got a small business, you can start a business banking account. And then you can start using and building credit through that bank account, get you a DMB number. DNB, you know what I'm saying? I try to put some links in the description. I probably won't, but um, just if you want some information, man, hit me up on Instagram, Everyday Thing with PJ, and you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll feel free to uh, shoot you some information. But in all actuality, y'all, everybody better pull up. You can hear the beats. Um, but yeah, man, that's what you want to do. That's you know, This is my seminar, and I was just giving y'all some pointers. Like, don't let, no, don't let nobody... Don't let a fool try to teach you how to uh, start a business. Some people just don't know they, some people don't have no need to start uh, telling people how to start and create something when they ain't really created themselves. They just part of it, you know what I'm saying? But it's all good. Well, everyday people, man, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna holler at you later, peace. <laughs>